All right. Uh, in a in a moment or two, uh, in a moment, in a moment or two, rented lips. I brought my wrong lips tonight. Excuse me. In a moment or two, I'm going to switch over to Swedish, and <laughs> then you'll see how it turns out, really. And uh, before I get there, I have to tell you an anecdote that will impress upon you that I want you to understand before I do go over to Swedish that it was really hard for me to learn Swedish coming from California as I do. And uh, how, how many of you here speak at least more than one language? Duh, otherwise you wouldn't be able to answer my question in English, right? <laughs> and the rest of you don't, good. Now, <laughs> when I moved here, I spoke, uh, I spoke two languages, English, American English and McDonald's, no. Uh, I spoke one language only, and it really took me a long time. And you know what kind of words you usually learn in a new language first? Yeah, somebody said, hell yeah, <laughs> who said that? <laughs> Those kinds of words, yeah. And uh, has anybody here ever said the wrong word that you pull out of your large vocabulary, you reach into your brain, and right at the worst possible moment, you switch one word for another word, and that word, you know it so well, but this other word just comes in from somewhere else and just, boom, and it just ruins everything. Has that ever happened to you? Yeah, well, that happened to me my first year when I was in Sweden when uh, I was really trying to impress. Well, I, I'm an English teacher at halftime. A couple of my students here in the room, or at least a couple, and that's nice. I'm glad they came. Sitting over there, stare at them, please. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> this is on the test on Monday. Right. Okay. <laughs> and uh, what was I saying? And uh, I was an English teacher and had my first class. It was only women in this class. And I was, I, if you think I have stage fright now, I really had stage fright then, even as a teacher standing in front of a class. And at the end, speaking English for the whole school year, and then at the end we had a party. We thought we went through a real big thing together. So we put a, had a party and we put it out and rented a cabin on a Friday night. Out, uh, outside of town when I used to live in Helsingborg and there all these women brought their old men and their husbands and everything and there I was going to impress them finally and I was speaking Swedish at this party because I was I had been in Sweden for a year and I was so Swedish and uh, I was there with a friend that I drove there and then I went and sat down at one of the picnic tables in this little cabin and my friend well I had the keys and my friend needed the keys. Said, well, come on, give me Niklina, you have Niklina. And I had them in my pocket where most sensible people would have them. And so I put in my hands, I was sitting behind, I have to show you this. I was sitting, yeah, no, forget that, no, I won't show you. I was sitting behind a table. Have you ever tried to get keys out of your pocket when you're sitting under, that's not a good place to be. When you're sitting under a picnic table at this angle and you stick your hand in there, if you've ever studied physics or have any sense like I didn't that night, your hand gets bigger when you make a fist. If you have something in your hand, when you're making a fist, it gets even bitter, bigger. Most pockets have a very narrow opening, and my friend was very impatient. He said, Macoma hate my nickeling at all. My friend was was designated driver that night, and that makes that means that I was designated drunk. But anyway, I tried to get the park my out of my pocket. I tried to get the keys of Macomiendo, you but Herbert Nicklin is gonna get his food or something out of the car. So you might have the lead the escobar told them from Infita. And that's exactly what all the women in that group that I, instead of it turning into a catastrophe, I think I was very popular that night. But uh, 